is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the West. Texas Rangers baseball is presented by AT&T High Speed Internet. Now blue skies and gentle breezes here at the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. This afternoon, the Rangers try to salvage one game of this three-game set as they take on the Oakland A's. And welcome in, everyone, along with Tom Greaves, Steve Busby. Glad you could join us on this Wednesday afternoon of Ranger baseball. Rangers uh, looked like they had one going last night, but uh, it was not to be. A walk-off grand slam sunk their chances last evening. And this afternoon, Ian Desmond will try and keep the magic going for the Rangers. Well, it seems, Buzz, like every other day we're featuring Ian Desmond, yeah. but that's because over the last, whatever, month or five weeks, he's been playing some spectacular baseball. He has a four game hitting streak. He's hit a couple of home runs, not just a couple of home runs, but a game winner against Toronto back home and almost a game winner yesterday. Two run homer in the ninth inning gave the Rangers a one run lead. They wouldn't be able to hold that lead, but Ian is not only getting the big hits, he's playing center field now, he's running the bases, and he's playing like a champion right now. And you've heard uh, Ian talk about it. You've heard Jeff Bannister talk about Ian Desmond. The only thing he cares about is winning ball games, and everything that's happened before is not worth a thing coming here this afternoon. They are looking to win one game out of the three here this afternoon. Adrian and Beltre and the Rangers getting set to take on the Oakland A's. We'll have the starting lineups in the first pitch right after this. Ford Southwest is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer today for incredible deals and see why Ford is the best in Texas. Buy AT&T high-speed internet. Get a deal worth talking about, get high-speed internet from AT&T. And by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. 
of a beautiful afternoon here in the East Bay. Temperatures in the uh, mid 60s, a very light breeze. It'll be a variable directions here at the ballpark. Little bit of haze in the air, so it'll cut down on the uh, high sky effect just a bit, make it a little bit easier on the fielders. Uh, ball way up there for him to track. And the uh, A's uh, taking the field. And now Tom's going to tell you about the Southwest Airlines Texas Rangers lineup. The Rangers will start off with Rubnet Odor at second base. Ian Desmond with a big home run last night. He'll bat second. Adrian Beltre is at third base. Prince Fielder is at the DH spot. Ryan Rua moves up to the fifth spot in the lineup in left field. Mitch Moreland is at first base. Elvis Andrus is seventh. Drew Stubbs gets the start in right field. He'll bat eight. And batting ninth is the catcher, Ryan Holiday. And that lineup for Jeff Bannister today facing the 36-year-old veteran southpaw. That is Rich Hill. And just an average Major League fastball as far as velocity goes, but you combine that with a very big curveball and a good sharp slider, he can be tough. He has been tough this year. He's been one of the A's most uh, consistent starter so far this year, but the one thing about him, he can have control issues, especially with the command of the fastball. The Rangers will have to check that out early. And Hill has uh, had a tendency to walk as many as five per nine innings on average. So the Rangers. We'll take a look at that early here this afternoon. The A's defense behind Rich Hill today. Coco Crisp, the start in left field. Billy Burns in center. Josh Reddick is in right. Billy Butler, third straight start at first. Tyler Leidendorf and Marcus Simeon up the middle. Leidendorf, excuse me. Danny Valencia at third. And Stephen Vogt is catching here this afternoon. Vogt has caught all of Rich Hill's starts this year. Bob Belvin's club coming in at 18 and 22 they have won three straight and they're getting things back in order here in their house they're now seven and 11 having won the last two against the rangers here now well, rugnet odor steps in he will start things off rangers at uh, 22 and 18 having lost the last two and odor looks at that first pitch high for ball one rugnet a 282 first average 12, seven 12, home 12. runs and 21 driven in that has been in that leadoff spot now in 18 of the last 19 ball games. Sharply hit, but Lattendorf, foot on the outfield grass, throws out Odor, one gone. Well, the umpires here this afternoon, the quartet consisting of Jerry Lane, the crew chief, calling the balls and strikes. Hunter Windelstedt at first, and Gabe Morales at second. Scott Berry down the line at third. A one out, here's Ian Desmond. Well, Ian's stepping in, and he has been a real boost to the Ranger offense the last four weeks since he got things turned around for himself offensively. First couple weeks of the season, you can see him grinding his teeth just about every time he, he talked about offense. And now he has let that bat do all the talking for him, and it has been screaming. No balls and two strikes. Our TXU Energy Power Player to watch. That man on your screen right there. Ian Desmond, last eight ball games, three home runs, 12 RBI, and a 361 average. How about six for 10 with runners in scoring position? And six of those eight ball games, he's had more than one hit. One and two now. Rangers with that 22 and 18 mark now trail the Seattle Mariners by a game once again. Here's the big breaking ball that hangs high. Rangers have had sole possession of first place for a couple of days, but now with the back to back losses, they have fallen behind. Seattle playing pretty good baseball. They're playing uh, in Baltimore. They have a night game on the East Coast. Another big breaking ball that hangs outside. It's a full count. So Desmond with one out trying to get aboard Adrian Beltre this afternoon moving up to that number three slot. Omar Mazzara given the uh, start off of this ball game. Payoff pitch on the way. Left center field hanging up for Billy Burns. Two gone. Well, Rich Hill has one of those curveballs that's good enough that he can throw it as much as he wants to. 
and it's still a very difficult pitch for the hitters. It's not like you get used to hitting it. It's kind of like a fastball. If you want to throw your fastball, you throw it where you want to. Time after time, you're pretty comfortable doing it. He's that way with his curveball. He threw it on the last three pitches, including the three-two pitch. And it's a very good curveball. Adrian takes strike one with the fastball. Beltre with a home run last night down on one knee, and that uh, tied him with Rugnet Odor for the team leadership in home runs with seven of them. <laughs> Adrian trying to screw himself into the ground. Another look at that big, sharp breaking curveball. Nothing at two to Beltre. Back into the seats. Still no balls, two strikes. And when he reaches back, he's got a little extra on his fastball, uh -huh. too. He threw that one at 93 miles an hour. A pretty good combination of pitches. When, when you see the record that he has this year and the way he's pitched, you wouldn't have expected him to bounce around like he has the last couple of years. Been released in each of the last two seasons. He's pitched in the big leagues for a number of big league teams, Boston, Cleveland, the Angels, the Yankees. The last couple of years, he's been in eight different, seven or eight different minor league cities. Right. And released in each year. And here he is, eighth in the league with a 268 ERA, the A's best pitcher. Go figure that out. And Beltre pops it up. Ladendorf, the second baseman. That will do it. A one, two, three inning. Rich Hill sends the Rangers down in order. We played half an inning in the Coliseum. Rangers nothing. And the A's coming up. At the top of the first, Tom's going to tell you now about the Oakland lineup. They'll face Martin Perez. Well, Coco Crisp is leading off again. He'll play left field today. Billy Burns is in center field. Josh Reddick is in right. The hot hitting Danny Valencia is at third base. Chris Davis, fresh off a three home run game last night, will DH. Billy Butler for the third straight day is playing first base. Mar Marcus Semien is shortstop. Stephen Bolt will start behind the plate. And batting ninth, the second baseman, Tyler Ladendorf. And Martin Perez goes to work with strike one at the knees to Coco Crisp. Martin, the 25-year-old left-hander out of uh, Venezuela, his ninth start of the year. That one and three record a little bit uh, deceiving as Crisp rounds to Elvis Andrews at short, one gone. And I say it's a little deceiving because Martin Perez uh, has not had any kind of support from the Ranger offense. The Rangers have gone 16 in the third innings without scoring a run for Martin Perez. Not one single run in the last 16 and a third while he's been in the game. You're gonna have a hard time winning ball games. They don't, yeah, all don't you can score. do is hope to shut out the other team and break <laughs> even in those situations. And that's, uh, you know, the way this offense has been prolific, especially at home, you that's a little bit surprising. But Martin's gonna have to buy him steak dinner or something. Billy Burns takes strike one. He pitched good in his last start against Toronto. Only gave up one earned run in six and a third. Yep. Threw 100 pitches, but 
The Rangers were shut out five to nothing in that game. One ball and one strike. But you sense Buzz, I do anyway. I'm not sure whether you do or not. As the season goes on, he seems to be getting a little bit more confident and comfortable every time he goes out there. Seems to be throwing more strikes. On that changeup up there, a breaking ball, and uh, Billy Burns popped it through the hole on the left side. A one out single has Burns aboard for Josh Redding. It's always been a case with Martin. He's very emotional on the mound, trying to make sure he doesn't turn the start of a bad inning into a really big inning. Working on his emotions to do that. Seems like he's making progress. Well, I think you're right, Tom. And I, you know, to me, it still goes back to the injury. Not that there's a physical limitation. Just getting yourself mentally back in the grind of competing every fifth day, like yeah. a starter has to. And uh, it's almost like the first time you come to the big leagues, you're saying to yourself, "Does my stuff really play? I mean, can I use my stuff in the strike zone as a pitcher and expect to get big league hitters out again?" And you have to answer that question, I think, all over again for yourself after a lengthy uh, injury stint. But Josh Reddick, 314 average. He has had uh, a little bit of problem against left-handers, hitting below 200 this year against Southpaws. No balls, two strikes here. Yeah, Reddick, Reddick is like a lot of hitters. He gets in hot streaks, gets in cold streaks. He also hasn't hit very well at home. But he got off to a slow start, and he's been hot lately. He got hot on the road, and first two games, he's been swinging the bat well. And he looks like a tough out right now. Pretty good pitch down and away, but didn't get the call, and the count goes to one and two. Yeah, that's a tough pitch to get an out right there. Yeah. He took it because he couldn't hit it and <laughs> got the benefit of the doubt on the call. Burns with good speed at first. One two pitch that will even the count. Well the one thing that's uh, plagued Martin Perez this year has been the base on balls and last time out against Toronto Tom you mentioned uh, worked well he walked three but a couple of them were in that uh, one inning where he had some problems mm -hmm. and once he got around that he was uh, was pretty good with it so that's that's been improving but he's still averaging almost five walks per nine innings and that's not like Martin Perez. About a walk and a half per nine innings more than what he had had in his career coming in. Well, if he could hit, it continues to be tough to hit, which he has been a 226 opponent's batting average, and cuts the walks down by one or two walks per nine innings. Then you've got a guy that might be off to the races. Yep. Yeah. Then you got something that'll work for you. Walk, cut the walks down, pitch an extra inning each game, pitch deeper into the ball games that way. Reddick chops it foul. Still two balls, two strikes. Yeah, really important, I think, for the Rangers. Uh, you know, Cole Hamill struggled a little bit last night, but between Martin Perez and Derek Holland, the Rangers really need the two of them to uh, get some consistency going. Both of the left-handers uh, behind Hamels and behind Kobe Lewis have had problems consistency-wise, and the Rangers would like for him to straighten that out a bit if possible. Three and two as the breaking ball missed low. So a full count to Reddick. Billy Burns at first with very good speed. Reddick to be followed by Danny Valencia. Perez back up on top of Hill, peering in for the sign from Brian Holiday. Burns staying put, and the pitch chop foul. Perez going with the fastball and got it inside, which is probably the best place uh, to pitch Josh Reddick. I think left-handers have a little bit easier time getting in there and making the ball stay in there. Left-handers' uh, fastballs tend would tend to tail into uh, off the plate inside to him. Low and outside, ball four. Oh, a single followed by a walk. Now you got to deal with Valencia. The weapon that Martin has is the ground ball. He's had 14 ground ball double plays, 57% ground ball percentage. And probably what Elvis is telling him right now. Trust that sinker, get a ground ball, and we'll get you out of the inning. That's one of those walks, though. I think you look back and you say, you know, I have the left-hander Reddick up there that I, I could deal with and, and didn't really have a good at-bat uh, against him. I didn't throw quality pitches and lost him. Now I've got to deal with a right-handed hitter 
with two men on that uh, is swinging a hot bat from the right side of the plate. Well, let's see what his uh, sixth home run in the last five ball games last night. One ball and no strikes. Well, let's see as you saw a 338 average. A dozen RBI to go along with his half dozen round trippers. Well, that's it. Spent uh, 15 days on the disabled list a little bit earlier in the year, too, and he's been hot since coming off. One and one. I think he pulled the string a little bit on that one. And the last seven ball games, that answers your question of how hot is Dandy Valencia. Yeah, and that changeup could be an important pitch for him with Valencia and Davis mm -hmm. getting the ball out of the ballpark on a regular basis right now. Keep them off the fastball by keeping them honest with that good changeup that he's got. Burns able to get back in as Rugnet Odor, who's shading up the middle, almost like holding a man on second base. Odor four or five steps behind the bag, but gives you a pretty good target, almost coming straight into second. Rugnet uh, going back to his station there. Yeah, maybe 10 to 12 feet behind the bag. So it cuts down Burns' lead just a little bit. A ball and a strike. Runners on the move. The throw is going to second, and it's not in time. A double steal for Burns and Reddick. <laughs> Rangers have had some success this year on a double steal, throwing out the back runner at second base. But that time Reddick took advantage of a big lead and a good jump. And he wasn't an easy an easy shot at second base. No chance to get Burns at third base on that double steal. Oh, now second and third with one out. Let's see uh, the advantage in the count at two and one. Three balls and a strike. And Perez working himself into some hot water here. He's got Chris Davis, the designated hitter, who had the walk-off grand salami last night. He's going to be next. Sharply hit into center field, a base hit. Burns will score. Reddick around third will score. The throw is cut off. And an R, a two-run single by Valencia. A's on top, 2-0. Valencia got hot in Tampa Bay right before they came home to play the Rangers and he's stayed hot in this series swinging a great bat right now. It seems like when you're hot you're getting in the right hitters counts you're getting the count in your favor you're getting the pitch you're looking for then most importantly you're not missing your pitch when you're in the opposite kind of a streak it seems like every time you hit you'll pull a ball hard foul take a tough pitch for a strike and you're down one and two oh and two all day long but when you're going well you're working the counts usually in your favor and then hitting your pitch and that's pretty much what Valencia and Davis have done in this series and Rangers are in the unfortunate position of facing them both when they're hot yeah timing is everything and when you play somebody is really important there is well here's Davis takes ball one high and away Chris Davis now the team leader with 11 home runs. Three of them coming last night. Last night his first three homer game as a big leaguer. Eight of 14 hits this month have been home runs. He leads the major leagues in home runs and RBIs in the month of May. Last night he pretty much solidified that. Hit three and drove in six. A lot of guys would take that for a month. That's for sure. 10 balls, 10 strikes from our team. Just to elevate the low pitch into the strike zone and make them make some contact. That was elevated a little too much. High and out of the strike zone. And Hunter Wendelstead said no swing. Three balls and no strikes. And again, look out here because uh, I, I don't think Bob Melvin believes in giving a green light. I mean, a, a red light to. Uh, Either Valencia or Davis, the way they're swinging the bats. No, nope, we saw that last night. 
Taken all the way, it's in at the knees. He was taken. Valencia wasn't taken last night. First home run he hit was a 3 0 fastball. That one's still going. That hit the sign out there <laughs> up in front of the second deck. Not down the line either, but almost right towards straightaway left field. That's where they have the uh, time of day notated out there. I think it, I think it changed the time of day. Like a minute off it. Yeah. Slowed time down a bit. Time that change up pretty well. High change up. Davis, you mentioned this last night, has only walked three times this year, so he's a free swinger. Well, he's run the count full and with Valencia at first and still just one out. Billy Butler will follow in the batting order. Payoff pitch. Low ball four. Second walk of the inning. Two aboard now for Butler. And uh, let's take a look at the Ranger defense while we have a moment. It's delivered to you by DeMontrant RV. Rua, Desmond, and Stubbs manning the outfield, left, center, and right. Morgan at first, Odor, and Andrews up the middle with Adrian Beltre at third, and Brian Holiday is catching here this afternoon. Now the walk has reared its ugly head for Martin Perez here in the first. Two walks, two hits. Billy Butler, a 233 average. What you said, Buzz, is exactly right about Reddick. It's a harmless inning, one out and a man on first base when you're ahead in the count one and two, but you got to make a pitch lefty to lefty, go after Reddick and get him out, not walk him ahead of Valencia and Davis, who've been so hot. Butler, two out of five. In previous uh, matchups with Martin Perez. Doug Brocale on your left and Jeff Bannister concerned, to say the least, about uh, what's going on. Rangers have had three left handed starters in this series. Derek Holland, and Derek Holland got, uh, got things squared around a little bit here on Monday night. Then Cole Hamels. In last night's ball game, really had to fight. His command wasn't nearly as good as what we've seen, but he was still able to limit the uh, the damage to Oakland. And now Martin Perez trying to limit it here in the first inning to the two runs that have already scored. One and two, the count to Billy Butler. It's left-handers and against right-handers, a marked difference: 200 points in the batting average for Butler. Perez a check of second. Got him swinging. Good change up there. No, first strikeout for Perez. Two gone now. Marcus Simeon coming up. He started that one high enough to where he induced the swing. He's thrown a couple of them that have been low when they laid off it. That was a good pitch. That was an unhittable location, but high enough to tempt him tempt him into the swing. Well, Marcus Semyon, who now is second on the Oakland club with 10 home runs, hitting at 222, 18 RBI. Our team zeroing in on 30 pitches. That was pitch number 29. The numbers for Semyon, Perez, and Semyon. Uh, Martin, the advantage in the previous matchups. Semyon just one for six. Going the other way, it's by the diving Odor. Coming around third, Danny Valencia. The throw to the plate is not in time. Valencia slides on ahead of the throw from Stubbs, and the A's have a 3 nothing lead. Kind of the last thing you wanted to do after the way the first two games have gone and a tough and loss Kathy, last night. Number 21. Facing a guy who has been the A's best pitcher and very tough to hit and get down in the first inning by three runs. And digging a hole, the Rangers will have to go into that comeback mode they've been so good at the last couple of weeks. It's a lot of pressure on the offense, though. And Drew Stubbs did all he could to charge that ball and make a strong throw, but not quite enough to uh, get Valencia. So three runs across, 
Runner still at first and second. Here's Steven Vogt. He lines one to right. That sends Stubbs back. But he stops in time to make the grab. That will do it. A's put three on the board on three hits and two walks and lead two. After one, three nothing, Oakland. Bat app. You can stay up the moment, up to the moment, at any moment with game day, live game video highlights, stat cast, news, and a whole lot more. Download MLB.com at bat. It's the number one app for live baseball for your smartphone or tablet. The Rangers with some work to do now as they come to bat here in the top of the second. Oakland put three on the board in the bottom of the first. Prince Fielder, Ryan Rua, and Mitch Moreland, the first to uh, first three to face Rich Hill. Prince a couple of hits last night. Two balls no strikes. The other both singles but saw him hit the ball hard on, on several occasions last evening and that's a good sign for him. Prince sat out the uh, first game of this series. Two and one. That was the first game this year that Prince had not made an appearance in. The 2 1 offering. Got him on the fist. Ladendorf in shallow right field. Throws out fielder, one gone. Next will be Ryan Rua. Well, Rich Hill, we've talked about how, uh, how tough he has been. And uh, even with a, a little bit of a, a problem with walks, he's still not allowing much of a, a batting average against. Right around 200 against the league, and that's uh, you can have a couple of walks if you're going to do that, and he, he certainly has. He's had five straight outings where he's thrown at least five innings, and has allowed four or fewer hits in each outing. And our Kubota Power stats talking about that. Here's that uh, last five starts for him, four and one. How did he lose one? I want to know. 143 opponents average and a 200 opponent slugging percentage. So not able to do much with Rich Hill of late. Yeah, that's either a very fortunate sign or a very well scouted sign. When you look at what he's done the last two years, released in each year, bouncing around from the minor leagues to occasionally to the big leagues to come back and through a month and a half of the season be pitching like this. It's pretty remarkable good fortune and yeah, he really hadn't started he, he made some starts last year for Boston he had four starts 
in the tail end of, uh, of the year in September. Really hadn't made any starts since back in 2009 at the big league level. He'd gone to the bullpen and worked with Cleveland, with the Angels, with the Yankees. The last team he made any starts with was first time around to Boston. And Ryan Rua aboard with uh, one out here in the second inning. That curveball just kept on curving. Batting right in the sixth position. And Ryan <laughs> right on the knee. Like Ryan was not shy about letting it hit him in the knee either. Slow curveball. You take one for the team. Get a base runner. <laughs> Hill doesn't give up many home runs either. He's only given up a couple. The one on one out. Mitch Moreland batting at 258 steps in. Takes ball one, low and outside. Mitch, four home runs, 16 and driven in. And this is a favorite road park to do some offensive damage in. Ten home runs, the most he has hit away from Globe Life Park in Arlington in any park. Ahead of the count here, two balls, no strikes. You can see why he might be the kind of guy that walks a lot of guys. He doesn't look like he pinpoints his fastball, and that curveball breaks so much. Can't be that easy to launch it and make it curve into the strike zone right, right after the other. Yeah, and I think if you if you want to make a general statement, guys that have that a big curveball like that are typically the ones that have control problems. Mm -hmm. And the key is pretty obvious. Try to lay off it. Tough to predict where it's going to end up as much as it curves. Two and one to Mitch after the foul ball. Orland, four hits in his last 11 trips to the plate. Up there with Rua at first, one out here in the top of the second inning. Two and two. That curveball to a left-hander has to look like it's starting right at you. It's your chin. Rich Hill, as we mentioned, a 36-year-old, born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts. Pitched collegiately at uh, University of Michigan. Got him swinging. Two gone, first strikeout for Hill. Again, it's one of those curveballs. It's not like you have to throw it and try to trick the hitter when it's coming. You can pretty much say, here it is. Try to hit it like a guy with a 98 mile an hour fastball. You throw it where you want to. That's going to be tough to do anything with left hand hitter. Breaks so much. I don't know if there's a guy in the league throwing a curveball that breaks more than that. Well, two gone. Here's Elvis. Elvis uh, sitting out yesterday's one game suspension. Valencia knocks it down, recovers, but it's too late to do anything. And Elvis comes right off the bench after sitting out a day and smokes a ball to Valencia. And we'll see how that's ruled. Rua down to second. They call it the hot corner for a reason. Valencia got in front of him. Knocked it down. Tough play to make. Valencia's made some errors this year. He's made seven errors coming into the game in 22 games. And the official score is still taking a look at it. That's a tough call. Get a rule at a base hit. It's right at him, but it was a smash and good. Got a base hit. I think that's a fair call. So two on two out. Drew Stubbs takes high for ball one. Drew as a Ranger this year getting 375 with a home run two driven in the 261 mark is the combination of uh, time with Texas and with Atlanta. One ball and one strike. Stubb you remember the walk off home run that he hit against uh, Toronto. On Saturday night. 
Hoops, that big breaking ball that just caught the upper reaches of the strike zone. So that's that's exceptionally hard to hit because it's doing all that breaking it so it starts well out of the strike zone. And the natural tendency to give up on it. Not think it's going to get far enough to be a strike and it barely did. And the left hander is ready one and two the count. Got him swinging. Couple of strikeouts in the inning. The Rangers get a hit and a hit batter. They strand two after one and a half. Oakland three, Texas nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. Texas Rangers baseball on Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer today for incredible deals and see why Ford is the best in Texas. Out of the cable cars of San Francisco right across the bay. We are on the East Bay and uh, the A's have a, an early 3-0 lead as Martin Perez goes to work here in the bottom of the second. Tyler Latendorf, the number nine hitter, Leading things off, then it'll take the A's back to the top. For Coco Crisp and Billy Burns. Ladendorf, the only A's that didn't, A's batter that didn't hit in that first inning. They sent eight to the plate, three of them scored. Martin trying to rebound now and prevent any further damage. 31 pitches in that uh, first inning for Martin Perez. Ladendorf 0 for 9 since coming back to the big leagues for the second time this year and he was just frozen solid on that uh, fastball or tailing fastball to the outside corner and Martin Perez has his second strikeout. Now that is left field. One of those borderline pitches on the corner. That call went Martin's way. The one the one borderline pitch that didn't go his way that hurt was the potential called strike three to Reddick. I think it was on a one two pitch. They still had plenty of time to come back and get him and let him get away with a walk. Coco Crisp. And Adrian Beltre from his knees gets up to throw him out. Two gone. Well, whether Adrian's been fielding the ball or hitting the ball out of the ballpark, he's spending a lot of time on his knees in this series. He's just saying, I'm keeping that ball in front of me one way or <laughs> yeah. the other. That was not getting by him. That, that's just in case. Generally, the ball's going to hit in the middle of his glove anyway, and it did then. No, two up, two away. Billy Burns got that three run first starter with a single to left field. Off speed on the outside corner. Nothing and one. Burns now a 270 average switch hitter up there from the right side against Martin Perez. 
nothing in two. Burns, one of the ace hitters that is not particularly fond of hitting in the daytime. He has uh, hit only 179 in day games this year. That's as opposed to 321 under the lights. The right field playing fairly shallow though. Drew Stubbs there makes the catch and a very quick and tidy eight pitch. Second inning three up three down on to the third three nothing Oakland. around May 24th on your calendar. That's your next chance to take advantage of $10 Tuesdays. Angels are in town and tickets to, for that Angel Ranger game are just $10. You can add on a $10 meal deal when you purchase online. Plus, all fans on Tuesdays get $10 parking. Visit TexasRangers.com slash specials to secure your $10 Tuesday tickets for May 24th. Well, Brian Holiday is starting things off here in the third inning for the Rangers. Holiday. Uh, 231 average batting ninth today as uh, Rich Hill what was that big bender to the outside for strike one. Holiday a home run eight driven in this year. Again that big breaking ball dropped at the upper part of the strike zone. I would imagine for a hitter you'd have to see that several times the curveball several times to be able to say OK that's going to break into the strike zone. Yeah, it, It's hard for a hitter because you just don't see many guys with that type of curveball that breaks that sharply and breaks that much. And these are big league hitters but it's still difficult to gauge exactly where that ball is going to end up as much as it curves. Another guy that pitched in this ballpark for a number of years Barry Zito had kind of a, a similar Zito. curve Frank, ball. Frank Tanana. Frank Tanana. Kind of yep. kind of curve ball as well. And, you know it's not like he's throwing 88 miles an hour either when he throws his fastball the way he wants to it's 91 92 miles an hour so it's got plenty of fastball and you're going to see a lot of curveballs and when you do see the fastball it's going to look like 95 or 96 miles an hour I'm sure it did to Brian right there yeah. after the curveballs three strikeouts the last two Rangers have gone down swinging one out here in the third back to the top of the order Rugnet Odor who grounded to second to get things underway here today. But again for a guy who in the last six years has pitched for seven or eight minor league teams and four major league teams has not found a home bounced around. Pretty impressive what he's doing this year. Maybe it's just the fact that he's getting a chance to be in the rotation and knows he's going to be there. Off the outer edge two balls and no strikes to Odor. Now Hill originally was the property of the Chicago Cubs first signed back in uh, 2002 by Chicago. Two and one 
got to the big leagues for the first time in 2005. Pitched for uh, Chicago until the 2008 season. It went to uh, Baltimore and Boston. His trek through the big leagues continued from that point, big leagues and minor leagues. Two and two to Odor. Ladendorf to the backhand and throws out Rignett. Out number two, Ian Desmond coming up before Ian steps in. Let's send it back to Aaron Hardigan for a Chevy game break. All right, Aaron, thank you. Here's Desmond, who skied to center field back in the first inning. He has to jump rope to get out of the way of that pitch. Down and in. 267 for Ian Desmond. He started the game with a 268 average, the highest his batting average has been this year. He's made a steady climb over the last four weeks. One and one. Go back 27 games ago, starting the uh, 19th of April. Desmond has hit 340. He has six home runs, 10 doubles, and 24 RBI in those 27 games. Two and one. The well, Hills walked a few guys this year. He's also hit a few. He's hit more than hit seven more than anybody in the major leagues. I have to think that a lot of his hit by pitches are on curveballs, maybe to a lefty on a curveball that just doesn't break, or the one like we saw to Ryan Rua, the right hand it just breaks so much that it comes down and hits you in the between the knee and the ankle. Yeah, Desmond tried to time that last breaking ball and couldn't do it. Ryan Rua. Well, let's just say he didn't have to rub that at all. It uh, <laughs> didn't hurt that badly. No, he didn't do much to get out of the way. But. <laughs> This kind of pitcher, he'll make you step out of the box and think a little bit. Three and two now to Desmond. And if you were if you were going to look for a pitch, you probably want to look breaking ball on three and two. But even if you look for it, I'm not sure you can do much with it no, if he throws it in a good spot. Yeah, I think. And you get the fastball, and the same thing would happen to me too. Yeah. So three up, three down, a couple of strikeouts for Rich Hill. Rangers gone in order. After two and a half, the A's three have the Rangers nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. Josh Reddick, Dandy Valencia, and Chris Davis, the first three A's to face Martin Perez. Perez uh, bounced back nicely after a 
three run first. He had a one, two, three second. Yeah, he will go to work on uh, on Reddick, who drew a critical walk in that first inning. Takes ball one inside. Reddick came up with Billy Burns at first, one out in the first inning, and got behind 0 and 2 to Martin Perez, and Perez ended up walking him. And that really set the stage for uh, a pretty good size inning. Andy Valencia immediately popped a two run single to center, and then one out later, it was Marcus Semyon. This time, Reddick grounds out to Odor, one gone. No five straight now retired by the Rangers behind Martin Perez. It'll bring up Danny Valencia. Now batting third baseman, number 26, Danny Valencia. Valencia upped his RBI total to 14 with that first inning single. That was uh, his first hit in matchups with uh, Martin Perez. He had been over four. Nothing in one. And 0 and 2 the count. And it looks like Martin Perez went back to the bench after that first inning and convinced himself, okay, that's my bad inning. I uh, just put a line through that one and uh, go back out and pitch as well as I can for the rest of the afternoon. By the dive of Elvis Andrews into left field. Valencia is two for two. Well, Valencia is hot. He was on the disabled list a little while back, but in nine games since coming off the disabled list, he's hitting about 440 with six home runs and 10 RBIs. Designated hitter, number two. Fans, MLB is back this Saturday with the return of baseball night in America. The battle for the silver boot continues. When your Rangers take on the Astros starting at 6 p.m. on Fox, or you can watch it live on Fox Sports Go. A one on, one out. Chris Davis takes inside and low for ball one. Davis also drew a walk in that first inning. Now a 228 average. Be a good time to break out that sinking fastball to Davis. Get that uh, double play grounder. Elevated that fastball. One and one. I think that's where Tali was trying to throw the 2 2 pitch uh -huh. that he hit for a home run last night. He talked about wanting to throw him fastballs after he hit breaking balls for two home runs. And the problem wasn't the fastball, it was where he threw it. He threw it down and out over the plate. I think if he fired it up and in like that where he was thinking about it, it would have fared much better. Yeah, and, and he had, what would you have, five five foul balls or yeah. four foul balls on, in that at bat. And I guess, you know, from a hitter standpoint, it, it probably helps you zero in, doesn't it, on a pitcher, the more fastballs you're it, able to It see. helps you, but it, it still seemed like he would have been susceptible to something up around the letters and in. I don't, I, I don't think he could have hit that pitch. But he was he had good swings at the high fastballs. He wasn't able to catch up with one. It was kind of like Desmond's home run against Toronto, right? Where he had three high fastballs that he had great swings at, didn't catch up with all three of them. And then the next pitch was a slider up there, and it was just a little bit slower, and it was just what he needed to get the bat on the ball to hit it out of the ballpark. I think in the case of Davis last night, what he needed was a pitch down and more out over the plate. And that's what he got. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, I think you've said that plenty of times. It's sometimes we make it sound like it was a bad pitch selection, but it's not necessarily what type of pitch it was. It's where you throw it. Yeah. It's the bottom line. Like it's hard to say a fastball is ever a bad pitch if you make your pitch right. 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 One and two. That will even things out. Now Chris Davis, as you noted, now 28 RBI to go along with those 11 home runs. Perez a check of first. And misses low, three and two. 
The count has gone full. Chris Davis hitting fifth in the order. Billy Butler, the first baseman, is in the on deck circle. Perez a long look in now has the sign. Sunshiny Wednesday afternoon here in Oakland. Slowly hit down the third baseline. Perez off balance throw. Not in time. Didn't get it. It looked like it came out of Mitch Moreland's glove as he tried to scoop it out of the dirt. That was almost a play that I thought was impossible for him to make. Take a look at the way he fields this ball and throws it somewhat accurately. I think if Mitch was able to scoop that ball, which is asking a lot, but if he was able to, he might have had Davis at first base. Pretty athletic play by Martin Perez. I'm thinking the whole way, okay, don't throw it, don't throw it. And he almost made the play. But goes down as an infield single for Chris Davis. So first and second now after back-to-back -back base hits. Billy Butler, who struck out the first time this afternoon, will stand in. And Butler, a candidate for a, a double play. Year in and year out, Butler hits into as many double plays as anybody in baseball because he hits the ball sharply. And he hits a lot of hard ground balls. Butler this year is grounded into three and just 60 at bats. One ball and no strikes. Even when he was having those good years in Kansas City as their designated hitter. But we're ground into a, a lot of, uh, of double plays with them. Had years where he hit 300 and had uh, near or above 50 doubles to go along with uh, as many as 29 home runs in Kansas City. Two balls and a strike to it. Perez gets the sign and sets. Beltre cuts it off, spins. They get one back to first. And in time as Moreland looked like he came off the bag from up here, but Harry Wendelstadt, the first base umpire, signaling out. Let's take a look and see if he was on when he caught the ball. He obviously came off. Was he on when he caught it? He was. Yeah, what are you finishing? Yeah, Windlestad making a pretty emphatic call. Yeah. Well, that's close. No, they're not going to uh, challenge it, and the double play gets the A's out in the third. We'll go to the fourth inning. Still three nothing, Oakland.
to bat here in the top of the fourth. It'll be Beltre, Fielder, and Rua to face Rich Hill. Adrian, 0 for 1, and popped out to uh, second base his first time up. Adrian uh, showing a bunt, and that got Valencia you know, coming in about 10 steps from <laughs> where he was positioned. He still doesn't believe he's backing up all the way again. Adrian looking down at him as if to say, you know I've got that blazing speed. Don't be claiming you clear back there. A ball and a strike. Now two and one. Rangers just one hit this afternoon. That was Elvis Andrews smash that went off of Valencia's glove in the second inning. Now three and one. Well, Hill has not walked anybody this afternoon, but he's behind Adrian. Three balls and a strike. Beltre batting third. Prince Fielder is next. Rangers trying to get something going here in the fourth inning. And Beltre, a towering fly ball to left. Coco Chris backpedaling and stops near the warning track. One gone, and Adrian just missed that. Well, that's in a, in a bat where you work the count to a fastball count, get the fastball, and then just get underneath it a little bit. 3-1 pitch, he gets the fastball inside part of the plate. Got what you were looking for and just hit the bottom of the ball a little bit too much. Just got underneath it. You can see Adrian put his head down. He was pretty well assured that uh, that was not going to carry out. Yeah, he knew, he knew he just missed it. Here's Prince who takes the curveball outside for ball one. Fielder grounded out to second in the second. Two out of four in last night's ball game with a run scored against Oakland. He's got a pretty good streak going. He's reached safe base safely either by a hit or a walk. 18 of the last 19 games, and he has hit almost 340 over that span. Three and zero now. The fielder back in the cleanup spot here this afternoon. He'll be followed by Ryan Rua. Three and one. Hill back to the plate and drops in the breaking ball. It's three and two. Well, he's throwing that breaking ball because he knows he can throw it for a strike. Three and one with a three run lead. He's not going to try to walk anybody in that situation, but he can drop the curveball in. Whoa. <laughs> that's not fair. I think that's what Prince probably said. Came with a sidearm hook. Hadn't seen him do that this afternoon yet. Boy, well, you know, I just said with Adrian, you worked the count to a fastball count. Adrian got a fastball. Prince worked it to the same count. He gets an overhand curveball and a sidearm curveball. <laughs> three and one, three and two. So I guess he's not worried about either pitch. He just wants to throw whichever one he wants to throw because he can throw them both for strikes. There's another curveball, and Billy Butler at first will take that to the bag himself. That is out number two. Now, two gone. Ryan Rua will be next. And, folks, a reminder for you to hit the road with the Rangers this year. Rangers destination travel packages offer first class hotel accommodations, great game tickets, a private meet and greet with a current Rangers player, a VIP ballpark tour, and a lot more. Just this season includes trips to St. Louis, Boston, and Denver. Visit TexasRangers.com slash destinations for information and to book your trip. Now two away. Here's Rua. Hit by one of those slow curveballs his first time up. Owen won the count here. Rua two out of eight with a double in this series. 279 average for the Ranger outfielder as he takes strike two. Rua this year been a tormenting left-handers. He's gone 10 for 26. That's a 385 average against Southpaws. Well, that time three straight fastballs. 
Oh, uh, Hill gets his fifth strike out of the afternoon. Rangers gone in order. He's retired seven straight after three and a half, three nothing Oakland. Ball on Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. And by Mazda. In every car we make, you'll see why driving matters. Sunshiny day here in the East Bay on this Wednesday afternoon. Rangers trailing 3 0 as uh, Oakland comes to bat here in the fourth inning. Marcus Semyon. Take strike one from Martin Perez. Bottom third of the Oakland order. Semyon vote and Latendorf to face Martin Perez. One hopper right back to the left hander. That is out number one. And Semyon, who had an RBI single in the first, is now one for two. Next will be Steven Vogt. Now now Perez, Andrew. since that first inning, 21. has allowed Steven. only two other base runners. Ace put two men aboard with one out in the third inning, and then Billy Butter grounded into that double play that uh, got Martin out. That double play, by the way, the 15th turn behind Martin Perez this year, and the 59th, the Major League best 59th turn by the Rangers. Boat in a soft line drive to right field. His first time up there. Sees an average of 242. Well, it's been uh, dealing with a few injury problems. Josh Fagley had uh, backed him up and became used uh, a little more frequently than backup catchers would. He and both started sharing the the duties and then Fagley had to go on the disabled list. Matt McBride came up. But Vogt has been uh, catching Rich Hill. Every one of Rich Hill's starts. Age old custom of counting sunflower seeds on the bench. <laughs> it's always worthwhile. Moreland ranging to his right. He will underhand to Perez covering. Two gone. So Martin, a couple of ground balls. Two away here in the fourth. And Tyler Ladendorf will now come up. Tyler Ladendorf. Ladendorf 0 for 1 today and 0 for 10 this year at the big league level. He was recalled uh, on the 10th of May from Nashville, which is the AAA affiliate of the Oakland A's. Since coming back in his latest stint with the A's, he's 0 for 8. 
One ball and no strikes. Looks like a pretty stylish defensive player. Excellent range to his left. Quick hand, strong arm. In the air to right center. Stubbs and Desmond. It'll be Ian Desmond making the call. And that will be it for the A's. A 1 2 3 inning for Martin Perez and company. On we go to the fifth inning. 3 0 Oakland. Coverage of baseball brought to you by T Mobile. Well, down in Houston, the Rangers next stop, Evan Gaddis, a big night last night. Two run home run in the 11th inning against the White Sox. He was recalled from Double A Corpus Christi in a rehab assignment prior to the game. Clayton Kershaw, the Highland Park uh, product, now had a 5 1 win last night against the Angels. Eight innings of work, four hits, a run, and punched down 11. Well, he is. Uh, Again, having a great, great year for the Dodgers. Clayton Kershaw. Here's a left-hander on the mound for Oakland, a Rich Hill that's having a pretty good afternoon. He has held the Rangers to just one base hit, two base runners through the first four innings. He has not walked a hitter, and he has struck out five, working to Mitch Moreland. Uh, he, he's been especially tough today. I, I don't know as a hitter that you feel very comfortable going up to the plate. You don't have the slightest idea what he's going to throw. He threw Prince Fielder on three on a three and one count on overhand curveball and a sidearm curveball. Well, Ryan Rue has watched everything that's gone on today. He's seen all the curveballs he's thrown. He threw him three straight fastballs to get the strikeout. <laughs> the last one was 93 miles an hour. So it's very difficult to guess along with him. And any of the pitches he's throwing are very, all of them are very good. It's pretty much fastball curveball. I've noticed any other kind of a pitch today. He's taking that turn. Crafty left hander to a different level. Yeah, he's, I guess, a combination of being crafty and powerful. He's a power lefty and a crafty lefty today. He's tricking them and he's overpowering them. Two balls and two strikes to Mitch, who went down swinging back in the second inning. And he's gone swinging here, and that is strikeout number six for Rich Hill. Now, if he stays healthy, and he, I don't know why he wouldn't stay healthy. I guess there's been times in this year when he's not. He can pitch himself right into the All Star game if he keeps throwing Everyone. like this. Yeah, and he's Everybody's on our Ford leaderboard this afternoon. The American League leaders in strikeouts. David Price at the top with 65, but Hill moving up that board. He has now 59. And the K counters out here at uh, Oakland Alameda County Coliseum as the breaking ball stays outside to Elvis Andrews. Elvis had the only base hit of the afternoon back in the second inning. It was one of those days where you're rooting for the Rangers. You're looking at the pitch count. You're hoping the pitch count gets high enough to where they have to take them out. Yeah, about the only thing you can say positive right, right now based on what's going on in baseball in the last 20 or 25 years, he won't be around for the end of the game. No, Not many not. complete games. 
He's pitched eight times this year and he's only pitched 43 and two thirds. So that's somewhere between five and six innings per start. Less than six, more than five. So he's not been pitching deep into ball games. But I don't know if he's pitched any games that are better than the one he's pitching right now either. No walks. One, two. Butler reaching down, pulling it right off his shin. And Billy Butler goes to the bag for out number two. Well, Billy Butler's a DH playing first base against a left handed pitching, basically. But in this series, that has not hurt the A's. In fact, he's made a couple of plays that have helped the A's defensively. Okay. Not known for his glove. That's why he's been a DH his whole career. But in this series, he's made all the plays. He had a beautiful pickup in game one that was a key play in a close game. And other than that, he's handling himself very well out at first base. That was a pretty good pickup right there. And yep. sharp skimmer off the bat of Elvis. So two away, and Drew Stubbs, who struck out in the second, finds himself down in the count, nothing and one. Stubbs hitting eighth in the order. One ball and one strike. Left hander back to him. And there's that big bender. One and two. I think you can kind of see why with Hill's repertoire, why he's uh, been a little bit prone to the walk, not only the fastball that has pretty good movement. That breaking ball, when you don't have command of it, he's going to be throwing it all over the place. But that has not been the case today. That's the same pitch that Drew Stubbs swung and missed at for the strikeout his first time. He laid off it this time. Hey, it looks like he tries to do different things with his curveball. That looked like one he was definitely going for the strikeout, throw it as hard as he could, keep it down and in, and try to get the same swing he got the last in the first Drew's first at bat. There's more of a slower one that seems like he tries to keep near the outside corner. Maybe to make things fair, he should have to tell the hitter which speed he's going to throw it. He's kind of working his, curve, hard one. Working his curveball like Charlie Huff used to work his knuckleball. <laughs> yeah. A little of this and a little of that. Charlie couldn't necessarily go for location very well, though. But he would change speeds with it. Out of play. Still two balls and two strikes. We talked about the uh, streak that Rich Hill has the uh, five consecutive games of five or more innings and four or fewer hits. That ties for the uh, longest streak. The A's organization in settings like that. Another foul ball. I think the last A's pitcher to do that was Dallas Braden back in uh, 2010. Hill with a new baseball goes to the wind another 2 2 pitch. Full count. Stubbs able to lay off a couple of pretty tough breaking balls from Hill. Drew trying to get aboard with two outs here in the fifth. Ryan Holiday, the Ranger catcher, getting ready in that on deck circle. Payoff pitch. Lost him. There's the first walk of the afternoon. Well, the Rangers get a base runner, their first base runner since the second inning. Now, I think if you're Hill in that situation, you have a three run lead, two outs, nobody uh -huh. on and a fast runner who's a definite threat to steal a base and it's a 3 2 pitch. You're saying I definitely don't want to walk him. Well he threw him a curveball and I think the reason he felt comfortable throwing him a curveball is he feels like he can throw that for a strike just as well as he can throw his fastball for a strike. Very confident that he could do that. Didn't work for him in that at bat. Ryan Holiday went down swinging his first time up there. He's down in the count nothing in one here. Holiday a 226 average as Drew Stubbs measures his lead at first base. Nothing in two back to back fastballs. Yeah, if this is one of those at bats, you went up there saying, okay, I'm going to limit them to one pitch and I'm looking for it. And you pick the curveball. 
you're out of luck just like Ryan rule would, would have been out of luck you, you feel pretty comfortable if you're a good curveball hitter going up there I'm not even looking at the fastball just looking for his curveball yet there's been some at bats where the hitter saw all fastballs like this one yeah he's seen the same thing Ryan able to get a piece of that last one though and spoil it so still no balls two strikes. Holiday waiting hill is set. There goes Stubbs the pitch is outside the throw is late and Drew Stubbs with the steal of second base so he has himself in scoring position Stubbs has not been caught on the bases this year that is his uh, third stolen base with the Rangers he had four with the Braves well, he he's fast and he's he's quick he got a good jump he reaches full speed quickly he's fast and he's one of the more graceful players in the league fun to watch him go after fly balls fun to watch him run the bases very smooth the way he plays and you can see a combined seventh stolen base for Stubbs this year. One and two, the count to Holiday. You're talking about pitch count, Tom. One of the byproducts of having a, a pitch like that curveball that is swung and missed a lot or swung and fouled off and missed hit a lot. Runs the pitch count up. It's uh, left hander that relies on that. In another you know, second or third time through the order, at least you're able to to time it well. If you haven't gone back to the fastball enough, then that curveball becomes a, a maybe a not a ball put in play, but certainly one you can get a piece of. It's not like having a real sharp slider or something like that that you can get swings and misses when it's just out of the strike zone. This one hit down to Valencia at third. Yeah, that'll do it. Well, the Rangers get a two out walk, but Stubbs stranded at second. We played half the ball game here in Oakland. It's the A's leading the Rangers 3 0 on Fox Sports Southwest. Folks, today's game is on AFN, the Armed Forces Network, broadcasting to U.S. Armed Forces serving around the world on land and on ships at sea. We'd like to welcome all of you and thank you so much for your service to our country. Bottom of the fifth inning, top of the uh, A's order to face Martin Perez. Coco Crisp 0 for 2 with a couple of ground outs, and he's going to have the same result here. 
as Elvis throws him out. One up, one away. Well, Martin threw 31 pitches in the first inning. He's only thrown 36 pitches after that in three and a third, so he is definitely settled now. Now the left-hander will face Billy Burns, who is one for two. Be interesting to talk to Martin and see what his assessment of uh, how the first inning went, what adjustments he made going into inning number two. He has been very good, as you mentioned, Tom, since then. Yeah, I, the biggest observation I could make is he's just throwing more strikes. He's he's going after the hitters. It looked like in the first inning he was. We talked about this. He was just trying to be perfect, and the Reddick at bat was the good example of that. He didn't get a call, but still he was ahead in the count, one ball and two strikes, and pitched him very carefully and walked him, and then had to face the middle of the order, who's hot. Broken bat roller out to Elvis. Two gone. Pretty good pitch coming in there. Before Josh Reddick comes up with two outs and the base is empty, we're going to send it back to Aaron Hardigan for a Chevy game break. Right, Aaron. Yeah, that's. Uh, I don't think anyone predicted that, nope. Aaron. I don't think so. Don't think so. Pete McCannon. Yep. An old teammate of yours. Yeah. Pete. Pete and I broke in together back back when the Rangers were the Senators. And then I believe a couple of years, at least one year, probably two, we were roommates in Venezuela, playing for the Caracas Lions. So I'm happy for Pete. Paid his dues. Been a coach, big league coach, manager before. Doing a great job for the Phillies. Sure is. One ball and no strikes to Reddick, who has walked and scored and grounded to second. And Perez keeping that fastball in tight to Reddick. Still a ball and two strikes. Team Perez, six consecutive outs now of hitters, uh, five of them on the ground. One double play, one fly ball out has been it. Another jam shot. Odor going out in a hurry and makes a running catch. Nice play by Rugnet. He had to sprint as hard as he could and reach up at the last second. And Adore, an outstanding defensive play. It's another one, two, three inning. We'll go to the sixth. Oakland three, Texas nothing. It is time now for the Sonic Slam Inning, brought to you by Sonic. Today's jackpot is worth $300 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. If a Ranger hits a home run during this inning, Kay Fuller from Valley View, Texas, 
will win $300. And if a Ranger hits a Grand Slam, well, Kay is going to win twenty-five grand, twenty-five thousand. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. Okay, hang on. I like your chances here. You got the top of the order: Odor, Desmond, Beltre, and Fielder. If uh, somebody gets on, Rugnet has grounded out twice to second base. Rich Hill, that big sweeping curveball, drops in for strike one. Another big curveball. It's gonna feel like. When Hill releases the ball, you can read the morning paper and have a cup of coffee where they got there. Not only is it slow, but it takes a securitous, securitous route to get there. First sidearm fastball he's throwing. He's dropped down a couple of times to throw a curveball. First time he's throwing a fastball from down there, though. The one two. Did he? No, he did not. He appealed down to Scott Berry at third base. Group had wanted to. Definitely going for the for the strikeout with those last two pitches. That's a good call. Maybe he's strong enough to hold back and keep from going through the zone. Hit hard and picked <laughs> cleanly by Butler. Butler picked that like he was a gold glove first baseman. <laughs> Wow. Well, it's been at least one play in every game for Butler. Yeah, so much for being the weak link on the defensive end of the ball. He's making all the plays over there. Holy cow. Well, the A's last in uh, fielding percentage and errors. And you wouldn't know it, by the way, that uh, things have gone at first base for Billy Butler. And they played a pretty clean series, as a matter of fact. Ian Desmond over two, a fly ball and a strikeout. One or oh and two. I'd like to get a base runner or two in this inning, get his pitch count up there where he can't come back out for the seventh inning. Got a borderline right now. That's his 95th pitch, I think. Yep, 95th pitch. Most nice pitches he's thrown has been 106, so about 10 or 11 more. Hopefully they, they happen right now. This in. He tried the side armor to a right hander and left it outside. That was a back door attempt. So two and two to Desmond. Hill back to the plate. Full count. Now Ian, listening to you, Tom, he's going to try to get a board here Stretch with one out. <laughs> Adrian Beltre will follow Desmond in the order. Payoff pitch on the way. And we'll reload and try it again. Still a little bit of haze in the air. It's not uh, that real high sky that we talk about up here a lot when it's extremely clear. Outfielders, infielders have a little background to work against. Desmond hanging tough, still three and two. Buzz, you had a stat earlier. How many starts? I think it was five starts with uh -huh. four hits or less. Right. He looks like he's on his way to adding one to that. And he's given up a grand total of one so far. He's had some problems walking people, but not today. Get down. There's a second base hit for the Rangers, Desmond. Even though he hit it toward the end of the bat a little bit, had enough on it to get it into left field for that one out single. Now batting, number 29. A lot of curved balls down in the lower part of the strike zone, and he'd seen he had seen enough to where he's able to Wait on it to get that base hit. That was pitch number 100, so that pretty much take care of the seventh inning. Hopefully, Rangers will get something going, take care of the rest of the sixth inning, get a reliever in here. 
And Beltre first ball swinging Butler with loads of foul room over there makes the catch and that is out number two. Well, Adrian out on one pitch and now Prince Fielder will come up. And just as you mentioned that Tom the uh, A's getting some action going in their bullpen down the left field line. Fernando Rodriguez who we saw working in the pen last night didn't get into the game but uh, saw him loose in the latter stages of the game. Prince 0 for 2 and there goes Ian Desmond there'll be no throw as a matter of fact the ball from Vogt got back to Rich Hill as Desmond was sliding into second. <laughs> That's the catcher saying I'm not wasting my time throwing it. You can't hold the runner any better than that. <laughs> Well, Ian Desmond with a stolen base now in scoring position and Prince going the other way has a base hit that is going to score Desmond as he rounds third and comes in to cross home plate Prince Fielder doing what he does so well and that's taking the ball the other way with a run scoring opportunity drives in his 21st of the year it's now a three to one Oakland lead well, for the last couple of weeks the Rangers have made a habit out of getting behind and coming back and they're trying to do it one more time today. The stolen base put in in position to score on a single. It's kind of like Drew Stubbs last inning. He walked, stole second. Rangers couldn't get the hit to bring him in, but the stolen base by in important part of this run, obviously, mm -hmm. because Prince knocked him in. Well, all of a sudden, Ryan Ruin represents the tying run of this ball game as he looks at that big breaking ball for strike one. Rua has been hit by a pitch and struck out 0 for 1 officially today. Average at 275, as you can see. No balls, two strikes. Hill is five and three on the season. He's had a decision in every one of his starts. He's had eight starts. He's five and three. That's fairly unusual. Came in with a 268 ERA. That was eight in the American League, and it's better than that now. Grew up, pops one into right center field. Billy Burns there to make the catch. That'll do it. Rangers, though, come up with a, a run in the inning on two hits. They leave one after five and a half. It's now the A's three and the Rangers one on Fox Sports Southwest. They May 25th the uh, Rangers and the Angels finish up a series at Globe Y Park it's a 105 start so plan on taking your lunch break out of the ballpark enjoy all the dollar hot dogs you can eat that's courtesy of Texas Chili Company 
Visit TexasRangers.com for tickets, or if you prefer, you can call 972 Rangers. Well, a three to one ball game. Rangers uh, climbing back into it by a little bit as Danny Valencia starts off the bottom of the sixth inning. Valencia two for two this afternoon. Had a two run single and scored a run in the first inning. And had a single with one out in the third inning. Elvis stays with a kind of a tricky hop, but he throws out Valencia, one gone. Yeah, Martin is definitely more aggressive after the first inning. He's trusting his stuff, throwing strikes, and mowing them down. The first inning, it looked like he just tried to come out and be perfect with his pitches. He was falling behind. He walked a couple of batters, one of them scored. Lost Reddick with a 1 2 count and threw 31 pitches, about even amount of balls and strikes. Since then, he's been incredibly efficient. Worked his pitch count to a very low point here in the sixth inning. He's pitching the way he has the ability to pitch. Just wasn't quite using the same style in the first inning. Now, three of the innings since then, uh, single digit pitch yeah. totals. Yeah. Davis drives one to deep left center field. Desmond pulls up. He will watch that go. Goodbye. It's out of here. Chris Davis, his fourth home run in the last two ball games. Twelfth of the year. It's a four to one Oakland lead. But Davis has now hit nine home runs and knocked in 20 runs in the month of May. Those are highs in Major League Baseball. And he got a belt high fastball right down the center square it looked like. I mentioned this yesterday since August 6th of the last year no one in baseball has hit more home runs than Chris Davis has. Very little stride very little movement but. That's a kid that generates a lot of power when he makes contact with the ball. Boy, that he does. Not a big guy either. So Davis now with 12 home runs this year. You saw Billy Butler ground out two away. And Marcus Simeon now will step in. Simeon one out of two, an RBI single in the first. Well, depending what other guys do today, he'd be tied for the league lead in home runs. So not only does he lead baseball in home runs since August 6th of last year? He's leading the league in home runs right now in this year. He hit four and seven at bats in the last couple of games. That'll get you there. Yeah. You make up some ground in a hurry doing that. It's May 17th and he's hit nine home runs in May. So he can string together some home runs. 20 home runs in the last two months of the season last year. Ended up last year with 27 home runs. We're not playing a lot of the teams in the National League. You kind of lose track of some of the guys and under the radar guy should have been with the year he had. No balls, two strikes. And another foul ball. That home run. By Chris Davis, the first home run that Martin Perez has given up on the road this year. And he was uh, able to keep the ball in the ballpark at a pretty good clip. One and two. 448 feet with that home run. That was almost right in the same spot where Adrian hit his the other day. Same general vicinity. Perez back to the plate. And Simeon drives it to right, but uh, Drew Stubbs backpedaling makes the catch. That'll do it. Chris Davis, though, launches his 12th home run of the year in the sixth inning. A run on one hit, nobody left. On to the seventh. 4 1 open.
this afternoon's Ford game summary. Danny Valencia with a two run single in the first inning got the A's going. And then Prince Fielder got the Rangers on the board with his RBI base hit in the sixth. That's all the Rangers have had going so far. Prince though, a big RBI. And then in the bottom of the sixth inning, Chris Davis is fourth home run in the last two ball games. 448 feet to dead central. And the uh, A's now with a four to one lead as Fernando Rodriguez comes into the ball game, his 16th appearance of the year. Rodriguez a very fine 169 ERA with an opponent's batting average under 200 189. And he's dealing to Mitch Moreland to start things off as Moreland takes high for ball one. So the streak continues for Rich Hill now six consecutive games. Five innings or more four hits or fewer. And that is the most in the uh, Oakland A's franchise history. Yonder Alonzo in the ball game, taking over at first base defensively. Two balls and a strike. It's facing Fernando Rodriguez, a six foot three inch right hander. Born and still lives in El Paso. Came over from the uh, Houston Astros along with Jed Lowry back in uh, 2013. That was a deal that sent Chris Carter and Brad Peacock, Max Stassi, over to Houston. Two and two. Outing for Rodriguez back on the 13th, so about five days ago. And Moreland rips it but pulls it foul. Broke his bat, he have to get a, a new piece of lumber. Look at that barehanded snag. That shows me something right there. Probably not even his glove hand. Had a scorecard in his left hand. Looked like he was about ready to give it to a young Ranger fan sitting right behind him, too. Wonder if he can get that ball removed from his hand. Valencia, well, the third baseman for the second time in as many days, able to make a sliding catch on a pop up in foul ground. Yeah, he must practice that play. He's pretty good at it. On the dead run, going into the slide, catching the ball right off the ground. That was a nice play. Yesterday was, a, even, was an even better play. Because he made the catch right as he was about to go into the dugout. Now batting, one, and he's got the knack of sliding Andrew. and catching it at the same time. Bill Moreland fouls out. Now Elvis Andrews. Elvis, a base hit in two trips. Rangers just three hits this afternoon. They put two together in the sixth inning for their only run. And Elvis hits a one hopper down to Valencia. Two gone. Elvis makes the right hand turn at first base heads back to the Ranger dugout. Drew Stubbs now will step in against Rodriguez. Number 15, Drew Stubbs. Might make note that the uh, Rangers now back to full strength as far as having a three man bench uh, when Elvis was sitting out the suspension yesterday they were forced to play with just a two man bench. You can't replace a, a player who is on the suspended list. Fortunately, it was only a one game suspension. They'll have to deal with whatever suspension turns out to for Rugnet Odor in the same manner, making several different contingency plans for that whenever it occurs. Gary Lane, the home plate umpire, yelling time, and I think it scared everybody. 0 oh, 1 to Stubbs. Drew drew a walk his last time. Oh and two. <laughs> and 
laid off that high fastball. One ball and two strikes. Stubb set. So is Rodriguez. Got him swinging. Now Rodriguez works a perfect one, two, three, seven. We'll take the stretch at the Coliseum. It's the A's four, the Rangers one on Fox Sports Southwest. Schedule and uh, Rangers finish up with Oakland here this afternoon. An off day tomorrow, and then they take on Houston at Minute Maid Park Friday, Saturday, and Sunday before coming back to Globe Live Park. Angels are in next Monday through Wednesday, and then the Pirates the following weekend as interleague play starts for the Rangers. Stephen Vogt leading things off here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Oakland uh, leading four to one. Martin Perez trying to break down a few barriers and he has not been able to complete seven innings this year several times he's gone into the seventh. little tapper by vote tough play for Odor and he tried to backhand and flip with his glove and couldn't do it and vote has a base hit much like the one he got last night he hit a little dribbler down the first baseline in that critical ninth inning yeah, it's funny how a guy like vote can get these two infield hits but that's what happens. Well, that's what can can happen when the infielder's playing out in right field. Yeah. Doesn't matter how fast you can run, no one's going to come in that far to make a play. And it got by the pitcher. The only chance was if somehow Martin could have fielded that ball. Once it got by him, it was over. Well, a leadoff infield single. Now, Tyler Lattendorf, the second baseman, will come up. He is 0 for 2 today. Time call momentarily. Uh, vote down there at first base. I wonder if they were going to pinch run for him, but nope. And the bunt attempt by Ladendorf is fouled off for strike one. Rangers with action down the right field line in their bullpen. As Ladendorf reads the signs from Juan Washington. Luke Jackson, the right hander, Andrew Faulkner, the uh, left hander. Faulkner. Appears to be ready. He's just going along pitch by pitch with Martin Perez. Another bunt. This one down the third baseline goes off into foul territory. Well, Ladendorf not able to get the bunt down. He is uh, now in a hole at 0 and 2. Ladendorf today called out on strikes. He's also flied out to center field. Let's see if Martin can get him to put the ball in play on the ground at, at an infielder. He can get their second double play of the afternoon. 
Odor and Andrus. Maybe a step to the left, but at double play depth. Over the mound, Elvis goes to the bag. The throw to first, they got him. A 6-3 double play second of the afternoon for the Rangers and the 60th of the year. 16th turn behind Martin Perez this season. Yeah, Elvis had to make make the play and then figure out how to get the ball to second. He was kind of an awkward position to shovel the ball to Rugnet. He almost would have had to throw it backwards. So he decided to take himself and Rugnet got out Rugnet got out of the way and Elvis made the strong throw to get Ladendorf. No, that empties the bases now with two outs and Coco Crisp up for his fourth at bat. Strike one. Crisp has grounded out all three times here this afternoon. Twice to Elvis, once to Beltray. Gets this one well to left field. Rua going back, it's one hop and off the wall. Crisp into second with a ringing double. Well, thank goodness for the double play. Eighth double this year for Coco Crisp. Now batting center fielder, number one, Billy. And that's Kerr. not just by accident. Crisp uh, has got some pretty good power for a guy that you wouldn't think of necessarily in terms of power. He's had over 20 home runs in the season before. Now he is in scoring position with two away. Billy Burns, who is one for three, steps to the plate. Nothing in one. Now thinking back, I think it was the first at bat last night. Burns had about a five or six pitch at bat. That was an aberration. He normally does not do that. He's up there to swing the bat. Whereas a check of second. One ball and one strike. Outfield plays Burns a couple of steps around to the pull side to the left and relatively shallow. Infield, you can see Odor shading toward the bag at second. One ball and two strikes. Burns in his last five ball games now has gone three for 19. That was on the heels of a season high eight game hitting streak for him. Didn't really want to do it, didn't want to take it, and he's gone window shopping. No runs, two hits, one left. We have finished seven innings here in Oakland with the A's leading the Rangers four to one. Hey, A's fans, Xfinity X1 will change the
Hickman and Rangers captain. And that's coming up on May 24th at the Whataburger on Sycamore School Road in Fort Worth. And you don't want to miss this chance to win great prizes and meet one of your favorite Texas Rangers at Whataburger. Visit TexasRangers.com slash appearances for more information. 10.30 on Tuesday, May 24th, is when Jake and the captain will be out there. Well, Brian Holiday to start things off. Fernando Rodriguez stays in the ballgame. Rodriguez had a 1-2-3 seventh inning. Now facing Holiday, who's 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground ball to third. Nothing in one. Rangers a run on three hits. They grouped uh, two of them together in the sixth inning. A one out single by Desmond and a stolen base. And then Prince Fielders two out a run scoring single. And that has been the sum total of the Ranger offense. Other base hit was an infield single in the second by Elvis Andrews. Nothing in two to Holiday. Hit well to left field. Going back is Crisp on the track and makes the catch. Holiday gave it a pretty good ride, but came up maybe five feet short. That is out number one. And before Rubinette Odor steps in, let's send it back to Aaron Hardigan for a Chevy game break. All right, Aaron, thank you. Here's Rugnet Odor with the base is empty. Rodriguez rushing that fastball up there at 94, and Rugi a little bit behind it. Odor has grounded out all three times this afternoon. All three of those times were against the starter, Rich Hill. Odor gets fisted, a little pop up. Alonzo coming down the line from first. Handles that one in foul territory. Two gone. Next will be Ian Desmond. A reminder for you folks on May 28th, the first 15,000 fans 14 and older at Globe Life Park will get a Rangers beach towel. That's courtesy of Powerade. So make your plans now to come on out and catch that uh, Saturday game against the Pittsburgh Pirates and pick up your summer giveaway, that Number beach 20, towel. Ian Call 972 Desmond. Rangers or visit TexasRangers.com for tickets. Well, two up, two away here in the eighth for the Rangers. Fernando Rodriguez now has retired all five hitters that he has faced. Ian Desmond has one of the three Ranger hits. He has scored the only Ranger run today. It's this one through the hole on the left side, a base hit. Desmond two for four. He just continues to swing the bat well. I'm talking about it earlier, when you're when you're in one of those great grooves, you're working the count in your favor generally. But the biggest thing is when you get a good pitch to hit, you're hitting it. You're not following it off and you're not taking it. And that's what Ian's doing right now. When he gets his pitch, he's sitting it squarely and finding a hole with it. Some of those holes he's finding are in the seats. Yeah. Last exactly. two home runs, big home runs too. End of the game home runs. Yesterday's could have been a game winner. Turned out it wasn't, but it could have been. Two run homer in the ninth inning to give the Rangers a one run lead. The one, other one beat Toronto in a walk off. Well, Desmond at first, and Desmond at the uh, top of the charts. He's in the top seven or eight in runs scored this year in the American League. And that's something we've lost. And a loose side up with Desmond. Bill Drake pops it up on the right side. Alonzo. And Latendorf. It's Latendorf, the second baseman, to handle it, and that will do it. So Beltre, 0 for 4 after that pop up. Rangers strand a runner. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth, 4 1, Oakland.
high-speed internet would like to remind you the Rangers, after an off day tomorrow, will be in Minute Maid Park in Houston to take on Jose Altuve and the Astros. Prince Fielder and company going in to uh, face the Astros. The Rangers swept the Astros at Globe Life Park in Arlington last month. So this is the first meeting of the year in Houston for the Silver Boot Series. Andrew Faulkner has come out of the Ranger bullpen to take over here in the bottom of the eighth inning. He will face Reddick, Valencia, and Chris Davis. For Faulkner, his eighth appearance of the season, and he pumps in strike one for Reddick. That was a rough first inning for Martin Perez, but after that, he pitched well, gave up the home run to Chris Davis. That's the only run he gave up after that in the last six innings. And Reddick loops one into left center. That's a base hit. Rua over to cut it off. Reddick hangs on with a leadoff single. And for Martin, it's kind of the, the same story. He's pitching well enough to win games if the Rangers were scoring him some runs, but unfortunately, it's another game where while he was in the game, the Rangers only scored one run. Well, the leadoff base hit by Reddick now with a series of right handers coming up. Yep, Bannister out to the mound. He will take the ball from Andrew Faulkner and he will call on Luke Jackson to come on into the ball game. So the leadoff single gets uh, Faulkner out of the ball game. One on, nobody out. Jackson coming on. We'll take a timeout. We're back to Oakland right after this on Fox Sports Your Southwest. Please, ladies and gentlemen, now pitching for. And you love them, the red, the green, and the blue dots from the Texas Rangers dot race, the original dot race in Major League Baseball. This season, collect all three dots in a limited edition bobblehead series. There's a base hit to right field from Danny Valencia against Luke Jackson. Well, Valencia, all you can say is he's hot. He's hitting the ball out of the ballpark. That looked like a slider on the outside corner. And he did exactly what you hope you can do on a pitch like that. Drive it the other way, and he hit it hard, too. Ball's up a little bit, but point being that when he gets a pitch that he can handle, he's driving it, and he's finding a hole. He had two hard hit balls. He had the two-run single in the first inning. Three more hits today. We finished that thought about the uh, blue dot bobblehead. The Bobblehead given away on May 29th. That's a Sunday. First 15,000 fans at the park will get that bobblehead. Log on to TexasRangers.com and get your tickets today. A two on with nobody out. Here's Chris Davis. Luke Jackson fires low and inside. Davis homered to dead center field his last time up. His 12th home run of the year. He is two for two with a walk and a single. Two balls and no strikes. Our AT&T high-speed internet replay, and this is a high-speed vapor trail that's left on that shot. 448 feet off the bat of Chris Davis. 
Last time up. Oh, he is hot. Yeah, he, he's got a hitting style you don't see a lot. You watch his front foot. He he barely takes a stride at all. He slightly lifts it off the ground, but that's it. A swing and a miss by Davis. The ball got by Brian Holiday all the way to the backstop. And that allows both runners to advance 90 feet. And Brian just missed it. It'll be a pass ball. So now second and third that forces the Ranger infield to pull all the way into the cut of the grass Rangers trailing four to one here in the eighth inning they have to cut down the additional run if at all possible three and one now the count to Davis and again Davis seems like he's been hitting and hitters counts this entire series. Luke Jackson the Third pitcher used this afternoon by the Rangers, second in this inning. Sharply hit. That almost took the legs out of Josh Reddick. That's pretty quick reactions down there by Reddick. At you, Varmint. <laughs> That's where you're supposed to lead off in foul territory, right? You get hit, it's still going to hurt like heck, but at least you won't be out. You definitely want, don't want to get hit in fair territory. Yeah, yeah, you will be out and hurt. 3 2. That'll load him up. And uh, Gonder Alonzo is coming up. Alonzo came in defensively. Now batting first baseman. Seventh inning. Gonna, that walk is going to cause Doug Brokale to make a phone call down to the bullpen. Brad Holman answering the phone down there and said, yeah, we got one of those. Alonzo, a 229 average with one home run, nine driven in. With nobody out now, the base is full. Rangers uh, still in all the way. And a drive to right field and hit well. Stubbs is going back at the track, at the wall. It's off the wall. One run is home. Two runs are home. Into second with a two-run double is Yonder Alonso. It is a 6-1 to one Oakland lead. didn't waste any time. He came in at the top of the inning for defense. He gets a hanging curveball right down that. the middle of the plate. That's pretty Marcus. much what you should do to that pitch. Just missed a grand slam. Let's see where that ball hit. Yeah, hit near the about a third of the way up the wall. I thought Drew was going to have a chance to catch that ball. He just wasn't quite able to get there in time. Excuse me, that was a single. Bases are still loaded. Everybody had to oh, right. hang up. I thought I, I saw Alonzo going into second. I didn't notice that either. You make assumptions based on where the ball's at, yeah. but I guess they all went back because they thought Drew was going to catch. They had a chance to catch that ball. And with nobody out, there's no sense taking a chance on the bases. There's a base hit to center field. Another runs home. Everybody else moves up 90 feet. Now it's six to one in favor of Oakland. Marcus Simeon, his second RBI of the day. Well, Luke Jackson has uh, come on to face four hitters. He's given up three hits and a walk. Alex Claudio loosening in a hurry in that Ranger bullpen. And, uh, Jeff Bannister making the slow walk out. It's about a 150 foot walk from the dugout out to the mound here in Oakland. And Jeff's going to use just as much time as he possibly can to get out there before making a decision as to uh, who will pitch to Stephen Boat. He would think it's going to be the left-hander. Now he signals that he wants Alex Claudio to come on. So another pitching change, the second pitching change of this inning. Claudio coming into the ball game. We'll tell you about Alex when we come back after this timeout on Fox Sports Southwest.
a buzzsaw here in the eighth inning. There have been five Oakland batters. They've all reached base, four hits and a walk. Oakland has uh, put two runs across. They still have the bases loaded with nobody out. Alex Claudio summoned to see if he can put this fire out. Claudio with his seventh appearance. 0-1 record, a 327 earned run average. 11 innings of work. Four plus of those innings. Very critical for uh, Ranger Claus his last time out. Claudio uh, against the Chicago White Sox back on the 10th of the month. Worked four and a third in relief. Dealing to Stephen Vogt. Vogt today one for three, an infield single. A's had the bases full, two runs across. Ranger infield at the cut of the grass in all four positions. That is out of play. It's one ball and one strike. Andrew Faulkner started this inning, came in a relief, and started the inning, gave up a base hit to Josh Reddick. Then Luke Jackson came on. Danny Valencia single. A walk to Chris Davis loaded the bases. Yonder Alonzo had a 362-foot single to drive home a run. Marcus Semyon single. And now Boat finds himself down on the count. A ball and two strikes. Oh, to 246 average. Audio with that set position, very unique to him. And he gets the strikeout. Oh, couldn't lay off that pitch down. And there is a big first out. Kind of a sweeping slider. Now batting. Second baseman. Boat generally 25. doesn't swing at pitches like that. He's a little bit out of whack in that at bat. The one away. Now the Ranger infield moves back to a more normal position. They are double play depth. Tyler Lattendorf grounded into a double play his last time up. So the Rangers can turn their third of the afternoon and get out of this inning. One ball and no strikes. Dorf 0 for 3 and 0 for 12 in this go around at the big league level. Just off the outside corner, 2 and nothing. Ladendorf at Triple A Nashville. Appeared in 16 games with the Sounds, 239. He has shown some excellent defensive ability, as Tom told you, in this series. Three balls, no strikes. Now, Ladendorf batting ninth. The top of the order looms large in that on-deck circle. Coco Crisp. One out, base is full in the eighth inning. And ball four. That'll force in a run. Davis drops down the line, steps on home plate. And it is a seven to one Oakland lead. Well, Ladendorf gets his first RBI at the major league level this year with a bases loaded walk. Now here's Crisp for his fifth at bat. Yeah, it's an unlikely guy to walk. He's hadn't had a hit yet this year. Batting ninth. And he, I'm sure Alex was not trying to be careful with him. He just wasn't able to throw it in the strike zone. Coco Crisp doubled his last time up. That following three consecutive ground outs. Ball two. All of a sudden, guys having trouble throwing strikes. Yeah, a couple of the pitches that he threw to Vote weren't strikes either, but fortunately, Vote swung at him.
Lonnie ready for the 2 0 pitch. Now the left hander again set. Three balls and a strike. Chris batting first in the order. He'll be followed by the center fielder, Billy Burns. Three and two. Coco Crisp was not thinking about taking that ball the other way for a single. He was thinking about hitting it over the scoreboard in left field. Veteran outfielder back in. Three balls, two strikes. We'll try it one more time. Coco Chris, so far in this series, is two hits in 12 at bats. Audio trying to get him here with the bases full. Hit to center field. Desmond retreating, makes the catch right on the edge of the warning track. Tagging in third, coming in to score, Yonder Alonso. A long sacrifice fly by Coco Crisp. It is eight to one Oakland. I like the way that Ian plays the ball in. Most outfielders that have played outfield, they run back, catch that ball, take a step, plant their foot, and throw it. But Ian, with his shortstop background, he catches it and just tries to get rid of it as quickly yeah. as he can. Kind of like going in the hole and throwing it to first base. But his arm is strong enough to where he still gets something on the throw. Yeah, Billy Burns. Couldn't quite wait long enough for that changeup. Burns the ninth athletic hitter to come to the plate here in the eighth inning. Hayes have put four on the board. They have runners at first and second with two outs. Burns one for four, a single and a run scored. Well, go for it one more time. Try that change <laughs> up again. See if see if Burns can wait on it. And look, I'm sure he said to himself after the first one, okay, I've got to wait on it. Still wasn't able to wait on it. Yeah. Maybe throw this a couple miles an hour slower and see if you can wait on this one. A little bit out of the strike zone. He did. Oh, <laughs> Birds, Birds couldn't do it. He, he was, was mystified. He was, yes, he was. But the A's score four times. We're going to the top of the ninth inning, eight to one, Oakland.
months. Leading off the top of the ninth inning for Texas, number 84, Prince Fielder. Well, Andrew Triggs now has come out of the uh, Oakland bullpen, and he has taken over for this ninth inning. Triggs will face uh, Prince Fielder, Ryan Rua, and Mitch Moreland. Eight to one, Oakland putting an extra four on the board in the eighth inning. And Prince takes high and away for ball one. Andrew Triggs. His sixth appearance at the big league level this year. Seven innings of work. Opponents hitting just a buck 60 against him. And uh, a diving stop by Lattendorf. That guy can play some second base. Yes, he can. Wow. You see, that's, I think that's the third play uh -huh. he's made to his left. Yep. And I know he was out in the outfield, but this ball was hit hard. All out dive, and now it's a long throw from his knees, too. He's got a very strong arm. Very impressive watching that kid play defense. Yeah, that is the third, the third hit he's taken away mm -hmm. from Ranger hitters. No, one gone. Here's Ryan Rua. Nothing and one. Rua 0 for 2 was hit by a pitch in the second. Other than that, has struck out and fly to center. A's eight runs on 12 hits this afternoon. Rangers one run on four hits. Ryan not able to check his swing. Nothing in two. Did he go that time? No, he did not. Gary Wendell said, but no. Not a swing. One ball, two strikes. Driggs back to the plate. That time, however, I think Ryan did. What tricks throwing from that you know, sidearm slot with a, a wicked uh, short arm delivery. Got to be tough to pick up. That's a big breaker, too. Now batting, number 18. First time you face him as a right hand hitter, that wouldn't be a fun pitch to try to hit or light. Fun pitch to try to lay off either. A two away, and here's Mitch Moreland. Mitch is struck out twice and fouled out. 0 for 3 today, hitting at 252. time Andrew Triggs got into the ball game it was in Tampa Bay last weekend for the athletics worked two innings right hander back to Moreland sharply hit but Alonzo comes up with a hard hop and to the bag he goes that will do it Andrew Triggs works a one two three ninth inning and the A's complete the sweep of the Texas Rangers the final here this afternoon Oakland eight and the Rangers won. It was a thorough whipping by the A's here this afternoon. Despite some very good pitching by Martin Perez after the first inning, Rangers not able to score once again behind the left hander. They go down to defeat. They lose all three games here in the Coliseum. Again, the final eight to one. We'll be back with more from Oakland right after this on Fox Sports Southwest. <laughs> 